Hi, everybody. Um, how's everybody doing on this fine Friday? Uh, it is Friday. Hi, uh, today's video is going to be my November anti-haul, uh, because it is the time of the month where we look at products and see what we don't need and what we don't want to buy. It's not my time of the month anymore because I have completely gotten out of sync with my own anti-hauls. Anyway, let's roll my sleeves up. I'm wearing a two-tone eye look today for the first time in like a really long time. And I forgot how fun it was and how easy it was. Anyway, if you've never been to one of my anti-hauls before, welcome. Uh, they are a series of video actually originally popularized by Kimberly Clark, who is back to creating content on YouTube, as far as I know. She's a drag queen, performer, activist, content creator, and um, she started doing these a long time ago, and I decided I wanted to as well. So today we're gonna talk about some stuff I don't need and what I'm not gonna buy. Please don't take it personally. If you like any of these, thanks. <laughs> um, because sometimes people do and I'm like, But why though? <laughs> Please don't, <laughs> it's a product. <laughs> Please don't be sad, be it's capitalism. One thing I did notice because I do use a couple of Instagram accounts to like, I don't know, collect all of the things that I wanna talk about in a particular video. I've noticed a lot more of the like partnered posts on Trend Mood. And so some of these in here I know are getting more buzz because they were just like paying to get the buzz, but it's still annoying and I still wanna talk about it. But let's get these two out of the way because um, I talked about them in my Photoshopping video that I uploaded the other day, which you should go check out if you haven't already. I redesigned these palettes. So first is the Nightmare Before Christmas and ColourPop collection. I don't see Nightmare Before Christmas in this personally. I think the like side products I can see inspiration in and in the packaging. The packaging has got it down, but ColourPop always does good packaging. But the palette is just like a regular old like saturated pink and purple palette. This doesn't read Nightmare for me at all. Um, as somebody who worked at Hot Topic and sold lots of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff to people of all ages, um, this does not scream Nightmare Before Christmas to me. Why? And like, it even doesn't scream Halloween or Christmas. Like, at least if you're gonna have something that's inspired by a film that is holiday themed, if you're not gonna have it match the movie, at least have it match the holiday and it doesn't match either of the holidays. So what's the point really? I don't see a point personally. I don't want it. There's no green in here for Oogie Boogie. Like the orange is kind of sad. Like <sighs> I don't need it. But I talked about it at length in my other video. So you can watch that. And then the other one I talked about in my Photoshopping video was this uh, elf. Elf, the film. I was like, this was an elf. This was Revolution. This is the I Heart Revolution line, which is one of Revolution's like several sub brands. Very confusing. They did with Elf, the film that came out in 2003, AKA 18 years ago. And it seems weird to me, again, what is with this like nostalgic stuff that's jumping back 20 years when like most of the people who they're marketing to weren't even born yet? <laughs> and also if you saw that video that I posted the other day, um, this doesn't match the theme either. This doesn't match the theme. It just looks whimsical and like Candyland. This looks like a Candyland palette that they just slapped some elf branding on it. It's the Cotton Headed Ninny Muggins palette. I love Elf, don't get me wrong. Like I love the film. Like it's one of my favorite Christmas movies to watch year after year. I can recite that movie to an annoying degree. Like I said, it's been like 18 years, but I don't need an eyeshadow palette with this or anything else themed around a Will Ferrell comedy from 2003, like. <laughs> Why? Again, why? Also, it's too big, so I made it smaller. Okay, now uh, let's move on to one product that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, something that I feel like I need to talk myself out of because it's so pretty, but it is the Black Spider lipstick. It came out for Halloween with Besame, and it's so pretty. Like, it's a black lipstick, but it's not actually a black lipstick. It's one of those lipsticks that's really misleading that look black in the tube, but when you put it on your lips, it's like a deep berry tone, like a stain. This is one that like does the adjust to your natural pH which never look good on me. I've tried those before from other brands that are like the lighter ones, never look good on me. I don't know why, 
I don't know if my pH is just fucked up and it just doesn't match what my lips should look like, but um, these never work. And also if I want a black lipstick, I want a black lipstick. I don't want like a lipstick that I pull out that's supposed to be black, but then it's not, you know? <laughs> like if I'm gonna buy a lipstick that looks like this, I want it to be a black lipstick. I don't want a mystery shade, Besame. The packaging is gorgeous. I love the spider packaging. This is super cool, but I don't need it. The other thing about these like pH lipsticks is that they're all a gimmick that they aren't usually worth what they're being sold. Like they're not worth the money because it's just, ooh, science, you know, like a gimmicky thing that matches with your natural pH. Like, what does that even mean? Like everybody's getting a different color. You know, like it's such a gimmick that never works. Like the green lipsticks that turn your lips pink and then the black, black lipstick that turn your lips berry. It just, it always looked, and it always looks terrible on me. Like it always looks so bad on me. So I don't ever like buying these cause they look like crap. Tartlet, tart, okay. When I was, <laughs> when I was getting ready to film my Photoshopping video, I almost included this one, but then I was like, I would just delete the entire thing because it already exists. This is the Tartlet Full Bloom palette. So it's not the in bloom. It's not the in bloom juicy. It's, it's the full bloom. But if you look at Tarte's palettes besides this, you wouldn't be able to know that they're different because they're the same. And they just came out with a palette that was about this size with almost this exact color story earlier this year with the juicy palette, like the big juicy one. It may have like slightly pinkier tones, but it is the same palette. Like it's the same palette. Like Tarte, I get it, but Something about them putting out consistently the same palette is frustrating besides just it being boring, but it also gives people this idea that it's it's a new palette and so that people will end up buying more of them, which creates more waste because it looks exactly the same. And it's like, I get that a lot of people just use neutrals, but these shades are actually quite large. <laughs> like Tarte's eyeshadows are not small. And so to have all of these palettes be like virtually the same for, them to keep wanting people to buy them. It's like, at least if you want to market things to people, make something different. Like at least if you want to sell new products, like just make something different, you know? Benefit is the worst when it comes to this because they just repackage the same powders over and over again. And I feel like when it comes to eyeshadows, Tarte does the exact same thing. Benefit to face powders is what Tarte is to eyeshadows. They put out the same shit time and time again, and it's always boring. Next, we have another Mickey Disney collab thing. I don't understand what this one is supposed to be, personally. Um, it's a collab with Morphe. So right off the bat, I'm not gonna buy it because I don't buy Morphe, but something about the color in here, these don't look the weirdest as far as like a color story. <sighs> what does this have to do with Disney? The, the rise in Disney collabs that don't make sense as a Disney collab. Ooh, it's weird. I swear to God, there's been a huge rise in Disney collabs that don't make sense as a Disney collab. And this is one of them. <laughs> I don't need this. It's gotta be another one that looks like this. I know it, I know it. I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but I know that there's something that looks like this. <sighs> Morphe don't have creativity anymore. The brain is so hit and miss. I don't even care. God, reading the comments sometimes on Instagram posts, um, destroy my faith in humanity. Not these ones, but other ones. Anyway, yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. Next, Ariana Grande has an eyeshadow a makeup line. Okay. A, the packaging is giving me very much um, Rare Beauty vibes. Uh, it looks very similar to Rare and very similar to Fenty. Like the little eyeshadow singles kind of look cool. The lipstick and lip gloss tubey things look like Rare. And then the eyeshadow palettes look kind of like Rare and like Fenty. At least Ariana Grande is known for like looks. So it makes slightly more sense than other people, but this is a very uninspired looking palette. The mascara is $15. Uh, eye highlighter toppers are 22. How much is the palette itself? 24. So it's not like the most expensive, but not really exciting, but it's called REM Beauty. Everybody hurts. The one thing I do like about it, the one thing I do like about it is the actual like logo. It's giving me very like turn of the century, millennial, millennium, uh, Backstreet Boys type, vibes. I don't know. It like the font and the little like squiggliness of it. I kind of like, so like, that's the one thing I like about it. I like the logo. The logo's cute. The logo's cute. She's cute. I like that. But the packaging otherwise I'm like, okay. It looks kind of cheap otherwise. Okay. Next. So Mac, I saw this, God, five days ago. 
and it is a new Sculpt and Glow MAC palette. And so far, there's only been one that I've seen. I haven't seen other ones. I'm really hoping that there's more because this one is like maybe my shade, maybe lighter. Honestly, it makes sense as a product for MAC to put together highlighters and then more like cool toned like eyeshadows. Cause this one that they released has the extra dimension skin finish in double gleam, which I've never tried before. And then their sheer tone blush in Omega. Oh, I guess Omega has an eyeshadow as well. I think, but honestly, this makes a lot of sense. But the problem is we've only seen one and I'm like, you're not just gonna put out one, right, Mac? Like you're gonna put out at least like five, preferably like your Mac. So I'm really hoping that they have multiples because I feel like this would actually be a really good product for Mac. I don't buy from Mac anymore, but if they wanted to put out something that actually made sense and people might wanna buy, like that actually kind of makes sense. <laughs> I just really, really hope that they have other ones. It is interesting seeing the comments though. People are like, oh my God, this is literally gray. And it's like, yeah, it kind of is. Like that's that's what contours technically should be. People have just gotten so used to using like orange toned bronzers and warm toned bronzers to contour with that they don't realize that like, actually the natural shadows of your face shouldn't be warmer than the tone of your skin, personally. So this, not the worst idea. Bad execution so far, just cause we don't know if there's other ones to come out with it, but kind of cute. Next, okay. Ha. Ah, next, uh, we're gonna talk about this new, oh, this is something I need to talk myself out of because it's so damn pretty. This is the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes. They're multi-chrome flake toppers that uh, you can put on your face on top of like cream and stuff. These look so fucking pretty. Oh my God. Like these look so pretty. Oh, it's like glitter, but flaky and like, ooh, it, ah. If I did more avant-garde looks or like intense eyeshadow, makeup, cheek look things like Denise Myricks, I would fucking buy this. I know myself too well <laughs> to be like, oh, I would buy this. And then it would just like sit and not get used because I don't do those looks. I buy things thinking I'm going to, and then I don't. So I need to stop. <laughs> I need to stop buying things that I, um, that are aspirational. You know, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes if you buy like weight loss jeans or whatever, you buy a pair of jeans that are too tight and you're like, they're your aspirational jeans, which like is fucked up. This would be like aspirational makeup to me that I would be like, oh yeah, if I buy this, I will totally do this. No, I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna do that. I would more likely end up like probably putting them on my nails as well as my face and then like maybe use it two more times and then it would sit on a shelf and not get used. So I'm not gonna let this beautiful product sit unused. So I'm not gonna buy it. Don't need it. I don't need it. Oh, it's so pretty though. Oh, fuck. Okay, next. This was what I wanted to talk about. Specifically the whole like partnership thing with Trend Mood. And I know a lot of people have like feelings about Trend Mood and like I definitely do as well. It is a good resource for these videos though. This is a line that was recently produced by Shein. It's called She Glam. There's a, an ad for this available now. A multi-chrome metallic party. New the chromosome. Chromosome? collection. Um, so there's like $13 eyeshadows, $6 uh, highlighters, $5 liquid eyeshadows, and then $4 liners. So it's, it's cheap. It's cheap stuff, but it's Shein. Like it's Shein for makeup. So of course it's cheap. I feel like the amount of money that like those fast fashion websites spend on like hauls, like sponsored hauls for other people, sponsored posts for this, people get this false sense of like how excited people are for this because they're paying for an ad on like one of the largest platforms for like just regular makeup releases. Cause that's what Trend Mood is. I feel like people are gonna see this and they'll be like, oh, that's pretty. And like not even realize that it's like a Shein, like shitty product because every review I've seen of this, every review I've seen of She Glam has been bad. I've seen reviews of Shein like clothing and people will say that it's like hit and miss as far as like if you're gonna get something that's good or something that's a piece of shit but all of the reviews i've seen about the makeup has been bad so i'm not excited for this obviously but i also think people just need to realize that like she glam i don't think that we should legitimize it more so not a fan of that. There was one that was for Halloween that I was like scrolling through and I was like, oh, that looks kind of pretty. But then when I scrolled to see who was made by, I was like, oh, it's She Glam. Oh, I don't need that then. Because they put things out super quick and super cheaply, but like cute, you know, stylish, trendy. Um, but that doesn't make it good. So yeah, 
Like we were already going in the route of fast makeup with ColourPop. This is just blatantly like, oh, we're gonna make fast makeup now. Like <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> Not a fan. Next, Huda Beauty. Uh, this was actually another palette that I photoshopped in my video on Wednesday. And um, I will again, keep this brief because I went into more detail on Wednesday, but this palette, it has one of those weird like rock looking, like it looks like rocks in a palette. I don't know why they keep putting these in there. I think it's probably just to get people to talk about it because it's like, ooh, what is this weird texture of this eyeshadow when it even doesn't look that cool once you put it on your eyes. So this again is kind of like a gimmicky shadow that just ends up looking boring on the eyes <laughs> that looks crazy, wild and crazy in the palette. But otherwise it's just kind of sad. And if you saw my video, on Wednesday, there's a sad lack of depth in this and a sad lack of just like wow factor. There's some shades in here that are, that read rose quartz, but there's not nearly enough. And the packaging is cute as fuck though. That's another thing that, another brand that gets the packaging down every time. Huda Beauty really gets the packaging down. Honestly, of all of the like influencer owned brands that I can think of that have made it to a point where they're like legit, Huda Beauty, definitely is one of them as, with like the best packaging. It's always so pretty and like expensive looking. It is $67 though, so that's pretty expensive. <laughs> Crush Stone Pearly Gloss Hybrid. Like I don't want like a like a gloss on my lid. Bleh. Pearly gloss? That sounds like something you would put on your lips, not on your eyes. Not for me, not for me. I feel like it's just gotten so saturated that I'm like, I can't even keep up with like stuff that's coming out and I'm like, what's new? I don't know, it's like lately I have been so uninspired by makeup that I have a hard time getting really excited or getting super mad about stuff, you know? Like, I don't know if it's just because I haven't been consuming that much makeup YouTube in general. Um, I've been consuming a lot of other YouTube stuff and I don't know most of the time like what's new and what isn't because I'm not really going to Sephora. I'm going to Ulta sometimes to like re-up on stuff, but otherwise, I don't know what's happening most of the time these days. It's kind of weird though. It is kind of weird thinking about that being like the fact that this is holiday. We're in November now, which is holiday season for capitalism. <laughs> that there's not so much. I don't know if it's like because there's not so much or it's just so saturated that I've like blocked out so much of it in my brain where I'm like, oh, that's new. Okay. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird stuff. But I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. I realized I didn't really go super in on anything, but like I said, I have been generally uninspired and just kind of bleh about most releases these days. Today's song of the day is, let's see, what if I'm listening? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Let's do, okay, actually, let's do this. I was, um, Going down a rabbit hole, I think it was like, I was listening to Harry Styles and then Harry Styles immediately like uh, switched into Arctic Monkeys. And I was like, are you just trying to play the most attractive men? Like, is that what the YouTube algorithm is trying to get for me? Like two super fucking hot dudes, like Harry Styles and Alex Turner. Cause their music has nothing to do with each other. Also they're British. So like hot British men, I don't know. I totally forgot how fucking good Arabella was from Arctic Monkeys from AM. Like that record, that record is flawless. Okay. That Arctic Monkeys record is so damn good. Oh, and the fact that it's like seven or eight years old now, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, how is it that old? But Arabella is a masterpiece that I forgot about for some reason. So today's song of the day is Arabella from the Arctic Monkeys from their record AM that came out in seven years ago, baby, 2014, fuck. Oh my God, this song has 90 million plays as they should. Uh, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's anti-haul. It was a little bit different. I've just been kind of not feeling a lot of makeup lately. I don't know. It's like, I could talk about everything, but then that would just be like me ranting for no reason for 45 minutes. And I don't really want to edit that. <laughs> so if you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias, my Instagram, my Twitter, or my Twitch, Instagram and Twitter are Abra's 07 and Twitch is Abra's without the 07. So you guys could go check me out there. Um, if you're new here, hi, welcome. My name's Abby and I talk about makeup and sometimes anime and sometimes music and other things. You know, I talk about life. Things that I like. And so if you want to hang out with me more, subscribe. That'd be cool. <laughs> subscribe and then hit the bell notification to get notified when I upload new videos, which right now is Tuesdays and Fridays. And then next month for Vlogmas, it's going to be Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So we're going to add one extra video a week, which I still need to 
start pre-filming. Fuck. So if you have any ideas for Vlogmas, let me know in the comments down below because I would greatly appreciate it because I want to make things that I want to make, but I also want to make things that you want to see. So definitely know that there's already like a list that I have. I don't have to come up with 31 videos. I only have to come up with like 16. Thank God. Honestly, I was gonna go crazy if I had to do every single day. I don't have enough hours in a day now. Somehow I did last year. I have no idea how I did. Oh, because I lived with my sister and I wasn't living with my boyfriend and I didn't really care if I hung out with her every waking hour of um, our days. Have a good weekend, y'all. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.